So in the last video, we finished wiring up the lights and the fan and we put up the last of the cladding and I varnished it all. So now we're on to making cupboard doors. We're going to fit the water system and fingers crossed we're going to get the gas heater installed as well so stay tuned. Hello and welcome to our channel. We're Jojo and Scott. We live in the Highlands of Scotland. In August last year, we took on a big challenge. We bought a bright yellow van ready to turn into a camper. It's been a much bigger job than we expected, from ripping out the filthy interior, scrubbing away at the grime, to finding some nasty surprises. It's been a hell of a ride, with loads of ups and downs. We'd love for you to join us on this journey, as we take a filthy ex-fleet vehicle strip it back to the basics and build up a tiny home on wheels. Thank you so much for watching. You can clearly see he's not doing anything apart from lying down. <laughs> Just having a nap. Just chilling you. I can't even film you in the cupboard because you're so in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in the closet. <laughs> that, that's that's not <laughs> Let's take it out of the way a sec. Okay, we're in actually. I think Dad's here helping. We are in. That's why it's not going anymore. Screws there. Oh, right, stay here. One, no, one more. One more at the bottom here. Okay. Come on. While you're in the cupboard, get the job finished. Uh, yeah. They're putting a wall in the cupboard. Oh, oh blooming wasp again. Out you go. Punch that thing. <laughs> he had a wasp in there with him earlier. <laughs> I was like, no! <laughs> yeah, it's coming back in there no. with you, Scott. Yeah, it's chaos today. Yes, wasp chaos. <laughs> I'm going to punch this wasp. It's up in my face while I'm in a small space. Though. Scott, it's thoroughly enjoying the rest of you. Oh, it's out. No. Back in again? Yeah. Come on, mate, come on. Be on your way. Oh. But it's warm in here. Mm. It's not a very big boss. Where's it gone now? It's by my feet. Oh. Evacuate it. Evacuate it. It's not welcome here. Go away! Today, we just had a propane heater arrive. Got this off of a, a nice gentleman on Facebook Marketplace. Thanks, Jake. We're now just going to set this into position and size it up for drilling holes for the exhaust and the air inlet. So, let's just see how it fits. The plan is to bung it under the cooker because there's already a vent down there. So it makes sense to keep it there. And that's also where the gas manifold is, so no brainer. We will rig this up so it's elevated a little bit. But let's just. There's a possibility of putting it a little more that way. We have space for the pipes to go down there. That might actually look quite good. Then we can rest on that bar. We've decided we're now at a stage where we can start to get some of the fresh water system in place. So, we won't be able to do all of it, because why would we ever have all of the bits? But we have the pump, it goes that way. We have an accumulator, and a little strainer thing to put before the pump. And we've got pipe. So I'm going to set at least these bits up, run a wire to the pump, connect the pump wire to one of those switches on the underside of this cabinet up here. And the pump and accumulator can just go down here really. Immediately found a pain in the butt. So I was just looking at which of the connections on the pump is the inlet and the outlet. The water tank is going to be over there under the bed. So I really want the water to be flowing this way 
to keep it nice and sensible. So that means that I'd love for this side to be the inlet, but there's a little arrow here, and the arrow's pointing that way, meaning that that one's the inlet, that one's the outlet. It just can't be straightforward, can it? I could mount it upside down, but the instructions for this thing did say don't do that because then problems can happen and water can get into the motor, so that's probably something I want to avoid. Got a bit of wood to secure the pump onto. Here is the accumulator. The idea is this sucker just holds pressure after the pump. Otherwise, the pump or water, if it didn't have the accumulator, then water would just come out the tap kind of spurty because that's how the pump works. So then it goes in there, this makes pressure in there, flows out from there a bit more smoothly. Right, so one, it seems that once I screw it in to a certain point, the threads just go out of alignment. And I can't actually see any damage to the threads whatsoever. I'm pretty sure that's not tight enough, because the first one managed to screw all the way to the end of the threads. I've still got some threads sticking out of the end of this thing. Okay. So we'll unscrew it. Threads to me seem absolutely fine. So that goes in. That's nice and straight. I'm going to turn it the wrong way. First of all. Click, that's the threads lined up. And it's doing the nonsense again. Ooh, this thing's annoying. Okay, we'll just get the bump on. We'll get the bump on, we'll work that one out later. Our pump and accumulator in place. The cables hooked up for the pump runs along here. Continues under that beam and it goes through that hole there. I'll connect that up to one of those switches and then I'll wire it into that 12 volt fuse panel. I'm not going to connect up the piping just yet because we don't have all the bits we need. Hey there. So, now that Jojo's got the walls all varnished, we're working on making the cupboard doors. So we're gonna take bits of ply, spare bits of cladding from the walls to make doors that look something like this. One real pain in the butt about using this spare cladding wood for the edge trim bits is I have to cut the tongue and groove off all these planks. Just part of it. You get the idea. Lots of that. So first of all I'm going to attach the long vertical planks because they then set the dimensions for the horizontal ones. Um, Less room for error if I do that. Once I glue them on, I will also screw them from the back. I've got a little bit of red on my drill bit.
both the vertical bits are screwed in. Now just to measure up those horizontals. That's all screwed together now. Take these clubs off for sure. Just over here. And that's the cupboard door. Just fits. I've got the pump and accumulator connected into there and I didn't actually plumb the thing up together because we were missing bits and I kind of just stuck it in because I could. But the bits have arrived! So we're going to get cracking with the water system and hopefully be able to get the sink and stuff set up soon as well. We thought we might as well start with the kind of first place that the water goes to, the tank! So we have a big ass tank connector. This tank will sit in this space. So we will have a big hose connection going from the water fill up point which is behind that wall there. It will be connected via a big hose to that tank connector. We're going to have another tank connector connected down here with a barb and a ball valve on the tank connector and we're going to connect that to the tank but we've also got some other gizmos we've got this neat system that tells us how full our tanks are we've got a sensor to go on the wastewater tank which we have to disconnect that thing again but then we've also got a cleverer sensor that goes into this tank that tells us how full this thing is so we don't actually have to like crawl under the bed and have a look in here also, this thing's going to be ratchet strapped down, so we won't be able to do that. Okay, so... This here is the sensor that's going to go into the freshwater tank. It can tell us, whenever it's really full, roughly half empty, and getting pretty dangerously empty. We'll cut a hole in the top, this thing will go into it, and then we just connect up to that. So we'll then press the button and it will light up on this side if the waste tank's too full and then it will light up here according to how full the freshwater tank is. It's time. Scott's going to start making holes in the tank now. I'm either about to do a fantastic job of connecting up our water system or I'm about to wreck a tank. Either or. I thought I'd start with the easiest one because I've actually got a hole saw for this tank connector. Start. Right. Out the way. Aha. So I'll drill a pilot hole in here and then we'll buzz that thing out. It's a very faint circle here for the, the water level sensor. I think I don't actually have a hole saw for that one. I might have to just take my time and use the jigsaw. And then we've got the water outlet on the corner down there. I think I'll get that one second. Oh, that oh, was that easy. <laughs> feels a lot easier than metal.
try, Jill, Jill Chuck. have the sensor over there? I sense I do. Oh, grab it by the electrodes below. Hey, that's good. Fits really nicely. Lovely. Before we stick this tank in the van and actually plumb the thing in, we make, need to make sure it doesn't leak. So I'm going to pour a whole load of water into it and make sure it doesn't leak. So on the inside of the tank, this thing is completely submerged. and. I yeah, can't feel any leaks from here, so conclusion is it works. So the tank's ready to go. Just needs plumbed in. So the tank's going to go here. We're going to ratchet strap this sucker into place. We're also going to have bits of wood around the base so that it can bash against that if it ever is to move, if that's not enough. And I've cut the excess off the ratchet strap, and if you melt the ends of these things, they shouldn't untangle. We're now going to connect up the tubes that run off of this tank. And um, so this thing doesn't just fit over this barb very well. See, so it just it's the same size. So supposedly, the way you get these things over here is you have to use a heat gun heat this sucker up and then ram it on. I've never done this before and this might not work. We might go back to the drawing board. The place that we ordered this hose from also gave us barbs of this size. And like, why would you give us that in the same kit? They've sent us the wrong dam for a bite for this. Good. Gonna have to wait for more stuff to arrive in the mail. So, since that pipe doesn't fit on the freshwater tank, we've decided to take a new tack and we're going to start putting the lovely tiles on the kitchen wall. Jojo has gone ahead and primed this bit of wall That's so that it's kind of sealed and it's a nicer surface for the tiles to stick to. Take the masking tape off, and then we'll get sticky. Uh, I think I have to put the upstands on first. We'll put the upstands on first. These are the upstands. It's just nice decorative bits of wood to go around the edge of the countertop to finish off, make it look good. That's the upstand in position. And this little board here is not going to stay there permanently. We're going to have to take it off later and paint it. But for now, we're going to screw it into position to use it to line up that piece of upstand, to line up that piece of upstand, to glue in this piece of upstand, to then be able to tile this wall. Stay there, daughter wood. So, this guy will get unscrewed and painted later. But for now, we're just using it to hold this thing in place so we can get this tiled. Now we're on to the part that we have been itching to get to. Yeah, so, we've got the upstand glued in, then we've glued the trim on, 
which it takes like 20 minutes for the glue to set and each piece we had to glue it, wedge it in place, wait 20 minutes, do the next piece. There's glue going everywhere, it was a mess. But we're finally on to the tiles now. So, these are self-adhesive. Peel that sucker off and plonk it in. peel off half or the full amount? I think peel off half, because then you've, yeah. then you've not got a completely sticky thing to... Yeah, I think measure up to the up stand, I think is the best way to do it. Fair enough. That's only one tile, and I think it looks brilliant. I really like it. Get off you! Okay. That's good. Now that. That's really nice. Now they've got that wall looking fantastic. We're going to try and install this Propex heater. Now, I was really wanting to have it under the cooker. Oh, just sort of running along this way with the vents pointing out here and that would be a lovely arrangement but on the underside of the van just along here we have a support beam of the like van frame so we can't or we don't want to put the inlet and outlet pipes going through there because then we're going through a big bit of frame so what we're thinking on doing now is securing the heater in a sort of higher position and then just flexing the pipes down we can get the we can get the pipes through this part of the floor here it's clear to go straight through here we're gonna have the pipes just bent down this way then we don't actually have to worry about like how far apart the holes are in the floor we can just have them where suits the floor and I, I guess the other point is as well why we're putting the heater under the cooker oh, yes. is because this is going to be our sealed gas box. So we have a vent to the outside there. Right there. We're going to put in a floor. We're not going to have a big gap. Yeah, there. we're going to close this bit up. And we're going to seal it all off. We have to seal off the backs of the sockets yeah, as well. Yeah, it's all getting gunged up. So in case any gas leaks, it'll go down and out and not into the living space of the van. Yeah, good point. Ah, oh, you've caught me with my fashionable face gear. So we're going to drill a couple of holes for the air inlet and air outlet of the Propex heater. And like everything else we've done with this van, we quite like to try and sleeve the holes so that it just protects and we can seal it up with Seca Flex. And we're just a bit more confident in it. Um, so we're going to sleeve these holes with these high temperature plastic things. We can take a lot of heat. Um, the space underneath the van is just bare metal plate, there is no like struts in the way or anything, so we can go down that way. We're going to have the Propex here suspended a bit higher so that we can just kind of bend the pipes up to it. I've measured from the edge of this vent, because that's a nice point to measure from, uh, we're going 7.5 centimetres to the centre of each of these. So from the edge of this, 7.5 centimetres, from the centre of that, another 7.5 centimetres. 
I've marked that on the underside. So I'm going to take my good old trusty manual drill. And I'm going to drill up from below and then we'll get a hole saw to make the hole bigger for those suckers. We'll then paint the edge of the metal. Once that's dry, we'll then flex those things into position for us to then feed the exhaust and air inlet through. That's the plan. Easy. Hey. Yeah, you're great. Yep, sweet. wrecking the floor. Hoof it up and metal shavings and a Scott's Day coat of hammerite on the bare metal. A messy coat at that. That is a very messy coat actually, that's incredibly messy. I'm going to be a bad workman and blame my tools. This is an old stiff brush. You're an old stiff brush. Oh ho. Right, come on, that's getting ridiculous now. Yeah. Stop it. The messiest paint job I've ever seen. Messiest paint. Um, he likes to paint some of as well. The paint in the holes have dried, so now we're going to stick these high temperature plastic things in to sleeve the holes and seal them up. Later on, we will then put the exhaust and air inlet through these. And of course we're using Secaflex to seal it up. I will also go to the underside and put a squirt of Secaflex around the edge, make sure this thing's really gunged up. But for now, that's quite jammed in there. While we're figuring out this little heater down here, Jojo has decided that she wants to try fitting out the bed. You might remember ages ago we Months put, ago. Yeah, we put this bed in so we could work out the position of the rest of the furniture. And so we've actually had the bits of the bed ready to go for a long time. Jojo has it all varnished and ready to go. But uh, since we're kind of getting close to the end, we thought we should put the bed in and check that the bedding arrangements we have are going to do the trick. So this is kind of how the van is going to look. Although this area over here, that will have a wall on it, don't you worry. Yeah. So, it seems to work. Just a trial run by the way, the bed's coming out again. I think we've got the arrangement worked out for positioning this guy. So we've got the wood base set up. We're going to sit the heater on standoff screws. It's like a little cylinder with a bolt thread on top, but you can put a screw through the bottom of it to make a little stand. So we've got four of these for the heater. Uh, so that sets the height and we haven't screwed these bits in yet because we're not quite sure on exactly where it's going to go. The position depends on how tightly I can curve this pipe and I think that's about the best I can do before it starts collapsing on itself. So that means the heater has to sit right about There. <laughs> right there. Yeah. And we also need to make sure we've got space at the front for um, the vent. That thing, which is quite chunky. So it's looking like this should all just fit. This is the frame that's going to hold the heater. And these 
are the standoff mounts. As you can see, they're very standoffish. They will go here. And now we're just about to screw these things in. Wish us luck. <laughs> Sweet. Should we see how that lines up with the heater? Oh, my knees hurt. Oh, my knees hurt. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> A big fat heater on tiny little legs. It's on stilts. <laughs> That's how all the cool heaters sit in their boxes. And there's loads of space at the back for this pipe. And I think there's loads of space at the front for that vent. That should just work. Very nice. Excellent. 